Singularity. Three, two, one, blast off. It had been six weeks since he'd heard those words from Mission Control, but they rang in Captain Fian's ears like a death knell at the gallows. He was flying this mission alone, the weight of the entire human race on his not inconsiderable shoulders. His destination, a rent in the space-time continuum, an existential threat for humanity. A black hole. Fian's ship, the SS Tsar Bomber, had been funded by the United States and Russia, and it had been named after the biggest nuclear weapon ever tested. The bomb was so powerful that the crew flying the aircraft that carried it had been given 50-50 odds of survival. It was 3,800 times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. The SS Tsar Bomber was carrying something over a million times more powerful than that, a fusion bomb. Fian's bomb used fusion reactions to generate more and more energy, breaking the first law of thermodynamics. The plan was simple, get close to the event horizon, launch the bomb into the black hole and then get the hell out of there. But Captain Fian had been given worse odds than his predecessor's 50-50. The launch went without a hitch, and the SS Tsar bomber was already racing back to Earth by the time of the first detonation. No one knew what would happen after the bomb passed the event horizon, but the theory went that as it was drawn towards the centre, time itself would slow while the bomb continued to detonate with ever-increasing power. In theory, the detonations would continue into infinity. In practice, Fian saw a brief flash of light on his ship's monitors and that was it. The black hole had gone. And it had spewed out all of the mass that it had swallowed, with the SS Tsar bomber in the firing line. Fian was already strapped into his seat, but he tightened the straps and leaned back against it as he watched the asteroids and meteors on his monitors. There was a strange feeling in his stomach. When the SS Tsar bomber touched down at the Atlantic Ocean, a full-scale rescue attempt was launched and the whole thing was broadcast throughout the world. It had been three months since Fian had taken off, and humanity was enjoying a rare moment of unity. The mission had been a success, but they couldn't wait to thank their saviour. But when the rescuers reached the ship and popped the door open, Fian didn't climb out. And when the first responders climbed aboard, there was no sign of him. There was just the dead body of an old, old man with flowing white hair and gnarled fingernails that curled back around his hands. The subsequent autopsy put the man's age at over a hundred years old, and his cause of death had been a heart attack. His DNA matched the missing captain's.